Hugh Kinley's side, Kenneth Kirkwood, Herbert Norman, and Canada-Japan Relations, 1929-1950. through 1950. Presentation in commemoration of the 95th anniversary of Canadian-Japanese diplomatic relations. This video is an updated version of a PowerPoint presentation made 20 years ago, in part at Carleton University and in full at the annual conference of the Japan Studies Association of Canada, JSAC. Following the Balfour Declaration of 1926, the then Dominion of Canada took its first steps toward an autonomous foreign policy and the formation of its own diplomatic service. Tokyo was the only Asian capital and one of only four major world capitals with a distinct Canadian representation at delegation level. The other three were Washington, Paris, and of course, London. Japan opened its legation in Ottawa in 1928. Canada reciprocated on Dominion Day, today's Canada Day, July 1st, 1929. 95 years ago. This video marks the event in a special way by focusing on three outstanding Canadian diplomats who, while representing their nation with high distinction, displayed a keen historical, intellectual, and sociocultural interest in Japan, which they expressed through genuine research and meaningful publications. This really iconic picture, taken in 1929, features from left to right junior legation officers Kenneth Kirkwood and Hugh Kenley's side, envoy Herbert Meredith Marler, and commercial attaché James Langley. The impressive building on the left of the original Canadian legation in Tokyo, situated on one of the choicest plots of land in the capital, was inaugurated in 1933. The imposing edifice on the right is that of the present Canadian Embassy, designed by Japanese-Canadian architect Raymond Moriyama and inaugurated in 1991. Hugh Llewellyn Kinley's side was born in Toronto. Military service in the Tank Corps was followed by undergraduate studies at UBC, a doctorate from Clark University, and teaching at UBC, Penn State, Brown, and Syracuse Universities. Kinlitzai joined the first class of diplomatic trainees of the fledgling Department of External Affairs, external for short, in 1928, together with Kenneth Kirkwood and Lester Pearson, the future Prime Minister. Japan was his first posting, the original six months stretching to seven years. Later, Kinley side served on the National Board of Defense and was known as an opponent of the internment of Japanese Canadians. In the absence of Marler, who was still in Canada, Kinley side opened and managed the legation. He presided over the first raising of the flag ceremony on July 1st, 1929. Since the host was a teetotaler, no alcohol was served, and the event came to be known in diplomatic lore as Canada Dry. Kinley Side's PhD thesis was an analysis of Canada-US relations, the first of its kind. He published three more books on foreign affairs and a rich two-volume memoir, the first of which featured Japan prominently, and it was translated into Japanese appropriately titled, Raising Canada's Flag in Tokyo's Sky. In 1937, Kinley Side published the book History of Japanese Education, in which he expressed admiration for the successful modernization of the field since the Meiji era, but at the same time was critical of the ultra-nationalistic trends evident after 1936. Kenneth Porter Kirkwood hailed from Brampton, Ontario. After serving in the RAF in the First World War, he earned a BA from the University of Toronto and a Master's from Columbia, after which he taught in Canada, the United States, and Turkey. 
Kirkwood joined externally in 1928 together with Kenley's side. Japan was also his first posting, and it lasted for a full 10 years. The pinnacle of his diplomatic career would be as ambassador to Egypt and New Zealand. Japan's culture and history inspired Kirkwood deeply. In 1932, he published a book of poetry titled Travel Dust, in which Japan featured most prominently. His very detailed report on the bloody Niniroku, February 26, 1936 coup attempt by rogue elements of the Imperial Guard Division indicates deep knowledge and a keen analytical eye. He was fascinated by Lafcadio Hearn, the Greek-Irish-American journalist and writer who reinvented himself in Japan as an interpreter of that culture to the world after marrying into a former samurai family from Matsue in Shimane Prefecture and becoming Koizumi Yakumo. In 1936, Kirkwood published the unfamiliar Lafcadio Hearn. Kirkwood's most important publication about Japan is Renaissance in Japan, about the stupendously rich cultural and artistic history of the self-isolated country in the 17th century, the foreword of which was penned by Alfred Joseph Toynbee, the renowned British historian. If Kinley Side and Kirkwood were diplomat scholars, Egerton Herbert Norman was the quintessential and brilliant scholar diplomat. Born in Karuizawa, Nagano Prefecture in Japan, into a missionary family, he first came to Canada when he was 16. He attended the University of Toronto and Cambridge before earning a PhD from Harvard on a thesis titled Japan's Emergence as a Modern State, which he completed in one year, an incredible achievement by any standards. Japan's emergence brought Norman countless accolades for its erudition and crisp analysis, but also possibly because of its Marxist interpretative line. Among Norman's other memorable scholarly writings on Japan are a book about 18th century thinker Ando Shoeki, a treatise on the military conscription system, and another on the ultranationalistic organization Genyosha. Norman's superb scholarship became available in Japanese through the highly competent translation work of Okubo Kenji, Canadian legation employee and excellent scholar in his own right. In no small part, thanks to Okubo Sensei's work, Herbert Norman is the best known and most appreciated Canadian intellectual in Japan. Norman joined external in 1939 and served in the Canadian legation in Tokyo until repatriated with the start of the Pacific War. He spent the war years at external in Ottawa working on post-war planning regarding Japan. His Japan expertise made Norman a natural choice to head Canada's post-war Tokyo legation. For the first months of the occupation, he was a great eminence behind the Supreme Commander for the Allied Powers, General Douglas MacArthur, with whom he is shown in this picture. As in 2024, so in the 1930s, Marxism ravaged university students and professoriate. While at Harvard, Norman befriended Tsuru Shigeto, then a radical leftist Japanese student and future academic, a connection which, among others, and related activities, gave Norman a radical leftist reputation. Persistent, though never substantiated, rumors in Washington about his leftist activism before the war, and even suspicions of being a Soviet spy, caused him severe mental distress, which led him to commit suicide while ambassador to Egypt in 1957. Prior to his death, he had been instrumental in the founding of the United Nations peacekeeping system, for which his boss, personal friend and supporter, Lester B. Pearson, received the Nobel Peace Prize. 
McKinley said Kirkwood and Norman represent that very rare contingent of highly gifted individuals capable of successfully combining the demands of diplomatic service with the multiple challenges of scholarly work. Kinleyside and Kirkwood's formal, original task was to drastically limit Japanese immigration to Canada, while Norman was an influential member of the Allied occupation regime in Japan after 1945. On the other hand, the three Canadians shared genuine historical and intellectual interest in Japan, amply reflected in their writings. I consider Ken Kirkwood the most culturally and artistically sensitive, a feature of immediate relevance to this short celebratory video. What more appropriate way then of concluding it with the verses of Kirkwood's 1932 poem published in Travel Dust mentioned earlier, entitled Japan. Out in the east, there is a magic land, a land that is crowned with Huji's snows, that's whitened in spring by the lavish hand of nature when wind through the cherry trees blows, of gardens grown by the ancient rules, of cherry petals like snow on the ground, of lotus blossoms in sleeping pools, popping their buds with a fairy sound. A land of maples and twisted pines, of lacquer torres and temple fanes, of quaint old bridges and peaceful shrines, of nightingales and sacred cranes, of cryptomeria trees at eve and booming bells from the temple yards of pigeons picking what pilgrims leave, of great gods standing as gateway guards, a land of lanterns that glimmer by night, of luminous shojis framed in the dark, of silver rain and of firefly light that spangle the woods with a faint white spark. There is a land of make-believe, of fanciful dragons and great red fish, of silk brocades, of magic weave, of miniature gardens set in a dish. Out in the east there is a fairy land, built out of mystery, arched like a fan, where art has completed what nature planned, the island paradise, Japan. <laughs>